it's just had an idea but that the journalists they're putting two and two together they'd use it and next time I saw it was um, in print an odd, odd thing to say in print you can put yourself that way and um, so the portal, the portal there is a time, timeless association with people. It's like you've left a, a um, not like a negative imprint, but a um, like a negative that can um, it can just be imprinted or left. And the fact that they the last the first person in that place was the grandson Haku Hanui of uh, Tia. Tia's grandson, and the um, last person down there was the um, Tuhanga. And um, uh, between that and the association, the whole area in Ngāti Hōtō, the first, the first, first people there where Tia himself lived with and died, was buried up by near Pukirimu at the uh, north end, uh, north east end of, uh, of um, Titi Ropinga. And so we're having a um, we're having an association or sense of, of the place. Now Jared, with great difficulty, got um, got a camera up and tripod and everything. I took photos of him, him and his sisters, and they they taped me another time. You know, made reference to the par across and the um, various association places, including the um, elders that uh, gave me some information. Not so much that place, but the area, area generally. And um, and so when I came up, I went there, and that's when I gave that statement, and they could have been just let, let, let it go, but that person just had the sense to note it. Now the context for it was that, um, was the, um, the, context of where the carvings, the pigment is within the black line demarcating and it's the sort of line that they've always put in with um, um, whatever use the cave has been in the end uh, with their burials and places in the past they've done similar black lines and so it's a communication and a divide right. between right. the present, <clears throat> the past, the future but it's also a, a divide of of the the um, from Maori a cultural spiritual divide, so you're into a different entity uh, enclosure if you like entity that takes you way outside the world, the world itself, the present, and the world we experience in the physical material world to that the world of the, uh, the spiritual world that is associates, um, it's a timeless association. So that's where you got Haku no Hanui, the Tohunga, mm -hmm. and certain others all, all, all intertwined as a timeless thing, mm. as a timeless thing. So um, that's, that's, uh, was part of the meaning for that. And having a Faitaima with her, um, because what did you both feel of the place? There are many caves. We've been in the big cave, right? Um, mm. Mm. And we've been in other caves and shelters and all sorts of things. I've been in places, caves, there have been bones, there have been artifacts, there have been ideal occupation right right through for travellers right up until milling days. But, um, but there's certain, um, a certain sense and features of that give out that give out of a place like that, but it's just another cave or a hole in the rock to mo most most people. And um, now with my timer, you had that those marvelous photos, that rainbow, that unless you're putting a hose spraying the dog and the sun catches mm -hmm. it to give that. Mm. That's how, how that's that's an impossible effect mm. unless you're putting a mist spray behind you to cause it because it's not the place or something that that such a thing would happen. Mm. And um, people like Jared might say it's a refraction of light or something else and like that. But with the hundreds of thousands of photos you might take of that and other people, 
from a phytoma and that link being within that portal, within that gate gateway, is um, you've you've seen that um, effect. Now you weren't aware of it when you're sitting about this this effect till you saw those photos. But take any other photos, and that will be just good photos or not as good of just all ordinary ordinary things. So that's um, something that you've brought out. I believe with that that connection, mm, mm. and it's not 100, 200 years ago, or even 600 years or 700 years ago. That's all, all come and sort of semi revealed itself. That's where you. Um, that's where you um, see what appears to be faces. Oh, you, Jared didn't show you the carvings, did he? We, we we saw the carvings in the cave. You did. Yeah. Those are those. The little faces. No, not the faces. You you you, you Jared point out the um, serpentine ones. I saw a quarter. There, there, there were there were two. There were two. One by by the other, they sort of came like that. One sort of offset the other. Mm. Everything else was faces. Yeah, I can't recall seeing the No, mm -hmm. but it was just to the side where you were <coughs> sitting, and we go there, we go mm. get back there. Must take take a photo or a picture of of that mm -hmm. and mm. where you were and where this. This has come out, mm. and um, in association, as I say, to these smaller, smaller designs or links, if you like. So that's another part of the journey. Well, our experience is exactly as you describe it. It is a meeting of the past and the present, and I felt that really strongly with this connection there, is that we were being. I don't know, it's just a, a convergence, it felt like, of of your Tupuna's energy and your energy mm. from the present, you know, there was something quite, something that kindled, you know, it's ephemeral, can't articulate it very well, but it felt something you could feel nevertheless, and so that cave did have a special feel. Mm. I felt it was... Um, the shape of it, it's so vulva like, you know. Ah, uh, that was, that was yes, that's uh, that's yeah. also that's also um, hence the um, hence that wider experience and connection that you've had there. But that uh, was um, into the other world that you go back to Maui and the um, and the uh, setting of life and everything else. And you knew it all. That, that was through that was through the uh, the evolver. Yes. But it uh, but it it uh, killed them, of course. Mm. But yes. the um. Yes, it is. The teeth are made of these. <laughs> teeth made of obsidian. <laughs> <laughs> take out most people, I would say. They had a good munch. <laughs> So, so, so that's um, that's why I didn't sh I didn't show any surprise or or anything when you showed me that. This is if I could um, see it way back then, but taken to now for that to um, that part in a more physical way um, to be uh, you experience to manifest, yeah, and to manifest. And you weren't aware of that type of manifestation until you saw the thing. But it's all, all, all come together, hasn't it? Well, I didn't even know who Piwa was. Mm. So the day before, we, I told Mum that we were going to her marae in Mokai. I said, what do I say? You know, when I have to stand up and say who I am. She said, all you have to do is say Piwa Te Tomo. Tikina te tomo, ruai o te rangi, and Marahira, who is my mother. She said, that's all you have to say. So when we met with uh, Gerard and Miko Day, Gerard's wife Viv, and their, their son, when we met, Mika asked me, you know, so who are you from? And I said, 
Iwe te tomo, tikina te tomo, he just said, stop, I know who they are. And I said, no, my mum said I have to say them all. So I said, piwa te tomo, tikina te tomo, ruai o te rangi, marahira is my mother. And he went, oh, we've got to take you to this place. So I think we went up the next day, but um, as you as you come to the the rock face, the large one where you can actually speak to it and it, echoes up behind you well we went up around the corner where the single tree is and and then when we turned towards the cave it looked to me it looked like the sun was shining out of the cave there was just so much light there and i asked him if he saw it did you see the light can you see it and he said no oh that's so, that's again the experience i said with that young maori chap and the woman maori woman karakia and the call he couldn't hear a thing, and it was as clear as the daylight. So that's certain areas and certain things that happen. Mm. But you got to be tuned mm, into the mystery. A multi practices. multitudes could go and get mm. no, nothing, mm. nothing. Mm. And mm. so that timing again, just, had it been a, had you gone, uh, uh, had you um, not known that, and look what happened so quickly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, something you didn't know the day before, and you said, and exactly. then suddenly you're there at the up at the uh, portal yeah. the connection. And, and it is that exactly. It's mm. a deep, deep connection, mm. and suddenly we've been connected to Hutupuna at, from the past, and and the living, the Mako days, you know, and and that's what was so cool about our Te Waipounamu rock art journey because it was connecting me <coughs> with my Kaitahu heritage and in a really deep way and uh, you know because I'm an artist I was really interested in the art of my Tupuna and how it would influence us going in our contemporary journey. I was just looking sorting through the photos <coughs> trying to look for the photos of the, um, the track that it, um, the digger that rolled down me trying to get up the bank at Hallett's Bay and um, came, came <coughs> across the photos that took of the big um, big ghost uh, Pits at um, open pits at uh, Karaka Point, you know, down at um, Picton there, past Picton. Mm -hmm, so mm. I just looked at those the other day too. Mm. So we had a, an hour long wait, didn't we, for our ferry to come in or something like that, but we ended up at the Karaka Point and that's our little place we go to now before waiting for the ferry to either. Mm. To get into talk, but yeah, so that's another another bit of a draw card there. But, um, yeah, so it's more than journey than just seeing a sign put up or something else. Or, you can feel yeah. it on those lands mm. that, that it's been settled for a long time, mold by mold, mm. you know. So, mm. so, yeah, I like it because we don't have very much that's in. Even by the way of reserves and things, let alone Māori reserves, it's all been gone. I don't know how we, how we got hoodwinked out of it, but we did. Well, For all the rock art and everything they did a few years ago, all they had control and say over of the hundreds and hundreds of sites were just two sites. They only managed to get about two sites transferred into their jurisdiction and management. Mm. And that's appalling, really. How, how come? Why only two? Oh, yeah, because right. they're all owned by Pākehā farmers. Oh, by the to, farmers, okay. You don't want to, you know, sub... And even the ones that those two, Opahi, Tanifa, and I think Dunn that's Tuna, right, that's that right. the other one. But, um, there's, there, there are quite a few sites that are caged off, you know, and open. the farmers are open to people coming and having a look at them. But the etiquette is you go and see the farmer first, you don't just bowl onto his land and Oh, well I went down to South Island to get onto um, get on one place, I, I rang, I rang from here, I think it was Lady Elworthy she, with her um, her husband, the estates were so big he had a little uh, tiger moth or something to fly, fly for his farm yeah. you know, you're almost, you're almost thinking Australia, <laughs> don't, aren't you? <laughs> But anyway, um, is this down south? This is the south one. Ellsworthy. Nice, Lady Ellsworthy. That's lovely. Yeah, it's like Lady Ellsworthy. 
but I, I, I re rang from here before I went down and um, so she was expecting me and she took me a photo of me take up walking down from rock art site behind Michael Trotton's book New Zealand rock art he had the the negatives when they did the print was back to front mm -hmm. in, in the book New Zealand rock art of New Zealand and so I was up there and I went round the corner and I saw was that a Craigie Burn? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that Craigie Burn you're talking about Ellsworthy? Is that the land, Craigie Burn Station, where Eagle Rock is? And um, yeah, the, yes, uh, that's got the big eagles. Mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Craigie Burn, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, on that farm, yes, yes, yes. Because it's, um, and when I, um, that she was, she was like the Lord Lady of the Manor. You know, giving your servant instructions, this, this, and this, and everything else. So she's got the house with the turret on the bay. Mm. From oh, wow. You sit the end of the road because she gave uh, one of the people, she has people staying there as long as they work. Yes. And she gave this uh, one of them strict instructions that expected of the fire to be all set and burning. And she come and got back. I don't know whether it's from Germany or something. He didn't have a clue. He put. You put some logs on, a bit of paper, lit it, yeah. and nothing happened. I wondered why it didn't burn. And so I quickly rushed around, <laughs> chopped some kindling, put it in, and that got the fire going in front of them. And when she came back indoors, she said it was lovely coming down the road. She could see the smoke coming up the chimney and had this nice blaze. He yeah, didn't have a clue. <laughs> That's, um... Gee, you think from Germany you'd know how to light a oh, fire? No, they don't have a clue. No, none of the modern generation, eh? They no, they have all indoor heater. That's yes. all in central heating. They are. Don't try them. Oh, dear. Yeah, that, yes, you're right. They don't. <laughs> As, and um, if they do, it's coal fires. And then oh. we, we went to go on to the thing with the eagles, but uh, where the eagles were. But um, some people in front of us, and she called out to them. She said, Wait. She said, what have you done? She said, you didn't close the gate. She probably assumed we'd come behind her. And so she told them off, you know, if the gate's closed, you open it, you close it immediately. <laughs> so she was very, you know, <laughs> all, all, all that. But she took a photo of me and she said, oh, it's like, oh, 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 oh. and the thorns and the brambles there come coming down from one of the um, big, great, long serpentine figures. And they had this big snake like creature Tenafar. Mm, mm. You had a little running figure at the end of it? Yes. I've taken a photo of that. Yes. Well round the corner, just round the corner, and in, in Indian Link was uh, Theo Schoon, 1948 I think it was. And he retouched everything he could. Yes. And he, mm. uh, he reinterpreted a bit. Uh, everything's all faded to nothing now that he didn't. But by touching up, he's completely destroyed poss any possible attempts you could have for dating. Yes. And, um, mm. and his reinterpretation was, you know, just red paint or and, uh, Indian ink or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, a bit, he took a lot of liberties, eh, the, the old scoop. Um, you know, with other people's art. Oh, and the days are all, all fossickers of types too. He came up here and he tried to dig the blaze out what he could in, in, in these uh, districts as well. I've got kind of some, some uh, correspondence concerning that. But he wouldn't tell anyone what he found, what he did or anything else. So he ended up in these districts, just another fossicker in mm. that respect. Mm. Yeah, well, so be... that's that portal thing, so I'll be... Um, Sons uh, knows where the key is. Mm. is well, that it makes sense on what you're talking. It wasn't nonsense what you were saying about the portal. Photos and that. You're between the two sets of Ui Uinuku. The two sets of the Uinuku placements. What do you mean? Where are the Uinuku placements? What do you mean? The, um... If you have a look at the, um, of what I've got put downloaded now, okay. and you'll see a little thing about Ui Nuku, but that's the correspondence with the Maori Department in Wellington. And, um, and uh, I, I make, I, I told them about the second set. So there are two sets of Ui Nuku posts. 
Now this divides two miles to the south and two miles to the north. Mm. Two sets of Uinu mm. posts. Mm. One's in dense bush, one's in the clearing. Mm. And these, these, um, this cave here is sort of in between the two right. Right. of the rainbow. The rainbow U Uinuko. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. I have him on the top of that little art house there, the little state house. Uinuku, Kahukura, and Rongomai are the three rainbow deities. Well, the first lot of Tuferi Tire that came here came under the name of Rongomai. The first lot from Tuferi Tire to, 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 to the lake, directly from Carwell. They, they, they came here out of it by Hartapi, but they came under the uh, name of uh, Rongomai. And, yes. and, the, and that got repeated with the road bridge, and that got repeated with um, uh, Puhataroa. Mm. Uh, but then I can demonstrate the same, mainly people like Nick Wall are doing exactly the same. Yes. I'm not recognising either overlaps or anything. Yes. And that's why um, your connections with uh, Te uh, uh, Tekohira and uh, Parikawa Tekohira that go right back uh, past that um, directly to Tia as well. Tia lived in, uh, over the other side of the mountains. He wasn't connected with the lands on this side or south at all. This has been sort of merged in the tellings and everything else. But um, no, the lands and the landmarks are quite uh, separate. We'll go, uh, when you go, do a little chaunt round the um, river. Bairuhaki uh, to Raki Rakai and the pass sites then going inland to uh, Mokai, um, um, not Mokai, Maro. We also uh, point out the, um, the division places that Tatia himself set and sure. where, he, where he came back. He returned, he made more than one journey, but where he returned, he only stops at one place. At um, uh, by a place called uh, Kuata, and um, that that was a, a small but a conspicuous place for uh, generations for many many people between Rokawa and Arawa and even um, up there. But it's been a, a interesting journey to physically find the places, and that was only possible. And I had free access to all the Kinley Farm cattle forests. Absolute, you know, seven day a week access uh, uh, any, anywhere. And that, that made that, um, that, you know, that um, journey uh, possible too. Mm. Uh, poor dog. He wants to get on our bed, but I, I saw him go in the room and. He came back out. Anyway, we'll let you well, go, well, Perry. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. You're most welcome.